Well, I'm actually at home. That's unusual. <laughs> I'm usually at the airport. But the other day I did a uh, intro flight with a couple uh, very interesting gentlemen. Uh, one gentleman's name is uh, Jurgen Heinemann. He's uh, 88 years young, retired 747 captain, flew for Lufthansa, and then his friend Ed. So uh, we're going out doing an intro flight in the R-44 with each of them. And so I thought, what the heck, I'll do my little spiel on how to fly a helicopter and the S-473, throwing in with a little S-473 training. And I'll take a camera with me and just record it, and then I'll post it on there for people to see. So I apologize for the weird camera angles. Sometimes it looks like my head is the size of a grape, and other times it looks like it's the size of a watermelon. But uh, anyway, forgive the uh, cinematography. Uh, it's still pretty good information to see, so let's take a look at it. So this morning we're going to be flying the uh, R44 Raven 2. And I've got uh, Jurgen. You guys might recognize him from previous fame on the, <laughs> some of our videos we did it oh, yeah, some, some night nice flying yeah right. there. And then we got Ed's here with us this morning and so I'm going to do my little spiel on how you fly a helicopter rolled into also SFAR 73 training uh, at the same time the first thing we'll talk about how you control the helicopter how you fly the helicopter and then more importantly what, how, what you don't want to do in a helicopter i.e. SFAR 73 training so so when you look I'm going to stand over here these guys so you guys can just look in here and, and we're recording okay good all right so <clears throat> basically three controls that you fly the helicopter with the first of which is the cyclic and it's called the cyclic because it controls the cyclical action of the blades as they go around in fact when you think about a helicopter if you think of the turning blades as a solid disc you know which way it's tilting it makes it easier to conceptualize but the cyclic controls are basically the, in the purest form, the tilt of the rotor disc, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you move this cyclic around, if you notice when I move the cyclic to the left, if you look up here at the blades, you'll see the blades tilt to the left, right? And I move it to the right, it moves back to the right. And it has droop stops on it, so if I was to move the stick fore and aft right now, you wouldn't see any movement in there because the uh, blades are basically down on the droop stops. I could turn the blades 90 degrees and then move the stick back and forth, and, and you'd see the blades right, tilting right. back and forth. And, so essentially the cyclic controls uh, is cyclic controls the direction of tilt of the rotor disc, right? right? So it controls the direction of the aircraft. Second thing it controls, and it takes a little bit of thinking to think about this, is airspeed, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say we're sitting here to hover, and if we were to bring the stick slightly back and tilt the rotor disc slightly aft, the aircraft will actually back up, you know? Coming forward, it'll move forward. And if we move the stick to the left, then the aircraft goes to the left, and move it to the right, it goes to the right. All right. But again, it also controls airspeed. Let's say that we're moving along at about 50 knots and we decide to come slightly aft on the stick, slightly back on the stick, then it tilts the rotor disc back. The vector lifts, it's tilted farther aft and the aircraft slows down. So if you come back on the stick, you're gonna raise the nose up, aircraft's gonna start to slow down. We'll demonstrate that here shortly. When we get in the air, I'll show you all the cardinal movements of the stick and what everything does. So, the cyclic controls both directional control of the aircraft and the airspeed. Raise the nose to slow down, lower the nose a little bit to speed up. Right? And, and so your next, your next control is the collective. And it's called the collective because it collectively increases the pitch in all the blades. And it doesn't matter whether there's two blades, three, four, five, whatever. Yeah. You know? So when you pull up on the collective, let me take this friction off. If you look out here, you'll see that the blade tilts up and it increases the angle of attack of the blades. Right? When you push down, it goes down. When you pull up, it goes up. All right? It's the up and down handle. And what happens up there is... So this, what, this what happens, well, the blades on a helicopter turn at a constant rate. When we start the engine, roll it up, turn on the governor, we're at 100%. So the rotational speed of the blades does not change. It stays at 100%, unless you have a governor failure, your engine quits. But, yeah, you know. yeah. So it rotates at, a, or it spins, or the rotational speed of the blades does not change. It stays at 100%. Right? Difference to the gyro, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That, that is one big difference between the gyro. Yeah. So when you raise the collective, so the only way, since you have, a, you have a set size to the rotor disc and you have a set rotational speed, the only thing you can change is angle of attack. Yeah. And that's what you're doing when you pull up on the collective, you're increasing the angle of attack. When you decrease the collective, you're decreasing the angle of attack. It has a governor, and you'll, you'll, you'll notice when we're flying along, if you have your hand on the throttle, and you should have your hand on the collective as we're flying along, you'll feel the throttle rolling the, or you feel the governor rolling the yeah. throttle around yeah. to maintain 100% RPM. Yeah. Right? On a real smooth day, you don't feel hardly anything. Oh, yeah. On a rough day where you're hitting countering turbulence, right, uh -huh. because of an updraft, 
decreases the um, uh, you'll, you'll feel it. Increases it, the angle of attack. It increases the angle of attack, yeah, producing more lift. Yeah. And so you'll see some variance in the throttle on a real bumpy, choppy day. You'll get quite a bit of the throttle rolling around. On a real smooth day, you feel almost nothing. Oh, yeah. But it does. It will continue to uh, maintain 100% RPM. Can you just talk about how to correctly use the hand on on the on the collective lever? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 The throttle out here on the end <coughs> is when you roll the throttle up. It's you're, you know to roll away from you increases the throttle. And when you Out, roll the throttle to, back toward to, yeah, you, to, to, outboard is more, yeah. outboard In, is more, inboard is less. That's correct. Yeah. And everybody that I grew up with, we all grew up from riding motorcycles, yeah. and it's just the opposite. That's you roll right. the throttle towards you, towards to increase, you. Yeah, yeah. and away from yeah, you, yeah. you know, yeah. and away from you to decrease. So uh, that takes a little getting used to, yeah. and that's one of the most common things. Yeah. Uh, it's nice with the with the Robinson because you have a governor, and the governor is going to maintain your throttle at 100%. Yeah. Yeah. On some of the other aircraft, say Schweitzer, you know, I had old Brantley, that thing was, uh, was a lot of work to fly because of the throttle uh, manipulation in. Yeah. But that's one of the very common things that students starting off, if they're flying an aircraft that does not have a governor, like a Brantley or a Schweitzer, yeah. Hughes 269, whatever, Frequently, they'll screw the throttle up, and they'll almost do it at the most inopportune time. Their oh. first steep approach <laughs> or whatever, and they'll roll the throttle the wrong way. They'll roll it down instead of up, you know, when they get at the bottom or whatever. Yeah. But it's nice to have a governor because that sort of takes care of the prob most of the problem for you. Now, if you overpitch the blades, and you right. can, you can, you know, if you try hard enough, you can you yeah. know, defeat anything. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, so you pull up on the collective. Dad. Well, yeah, yeah, wait, what's the correct uh, hand position on on right the, here on the end of the? Uh, I see. You, but so it's going to be your left hand. You, you don't want to be a desk grip on it. You nice, absolutely nice, not. No, 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 and that no. that has been the cause of numerous accidents. Yeah, yeah. And so the usual sequence of that is somebody will make an approach, mm. and when you lower the collective. The uh, governor will actually roll the throttle down, yeah. right? you, and yeah. whether you realize it or not, it's actually rolling throttle down because yeah. it's your blade angle is lower and it takes less power, and so yeah. rolls around. And then at the bottom, where you make the recovery, where you're starting to come up on the collective, all right, the governor is going to need to roll the throttle up, yeah. all right. Well, if you have a death grip on that throttle, this is a very common thing, and you'll see this um, a lot. Uh, and you know, if you had some big bruiser over there and he's death gripping the hell out of the, the throttle, as you're bringing it up, first thing, you, next thing you know, you get the horn. The horn goes on. Well, if they'll just let go of the throttle, the governor will roll it back up. You know, mm -hmm. which you really hate. And and you live about that time. I've already, if somebody does that, I've recognized because you can hear before the horn ever comes on. Yeah. You'll hear the engine start to uh, spool down once you get used to what the engine sounds like. Mm -hmm. And usually by that time, I'm usually saying, let go, let go of it, let go of it. I got it. You know, and let him. Right. And if you just let have them let go of the throttle, it'll roll back up. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But that's a very common mistake mm -hmm. that a lot of students will make is they will uh, death grip the throttle, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's their first steep approach and they're coming in a confined area, whatever, you know. So you know. So when the thing to, is to, to grip it lightly, right? Grip it lightly yeah, so don't, that they can, uh, don't have your thumb. Can, can do his job, right? Right. When you hold on to yeah. that, hold on to the collective. Don't put your thumb around yeah. it like that. Just have it like that, and you're coming up yeah. slowly with the collective. Yeah. And don't trap it with your thumb. If you trap it with your thumb and you're gripping the heck out of it, you may not allow the, the throttle to roll up, and you may get a low rotor RPM at the, at the bottom. Again, as soon as they let go of it, it'll spool right back up. It's yeah. not a not a big deal. The governor unless will take it right up. Unless the governor fails, yeah? Yeah, unless the governor fails, which is a very highly unusual event. Oh, so. good, yeah. Okay, and then, so this is our second control, the collective, right? And then our third control, our third control that we use Any torque pedals. are the anti-torque pedals. And I still call them rotor pedals because I fly airplanes too, not very often, once a, once a year whether I need to or not. That's about it. But, but I still will call them rudder pedals, so I'll just tell you. So I, I may say, you know, put your left, or I'm, I'll just say the pedal. Yeah, you know, put, you need left pedal, need right pedal. pedal. Turn, yeah. That's right. So if you look, left pedal turn. <laughs> so if you look back here at the um, tail rotor, watch what happens when I manipulate the pedals. And I'm going to go from full left to full right pedal. Yeah, and I'm going to leave the camera out here. Changes angle of attack on right. the blades. You're going to see that change. So there's full right pedal. There's full left pedal. Yeah. Full right. Full left. So. Yep. So that's how you control the yaw of the aircraft. So if we're sitting in the aircraft, just like in an airplane, if you push the left pedal, the aircraft's going to yaw to the left, yep. right? And if you push the right pedal, the aircraft's going to yaw to the right, right? So if we're sitting here to hover and we want to do a pedal turn, we can come in with just a little bit of left pedal and the aircraft will rotate around nice and slowly. And if we come in with just a little bit of right pedal, it'll rotate around to the 
to the right nice and slowly. So it, your pedals are used for basically, and they're called anti-torque pedals because that's what they do. They cancel out the effect of torque of the torque of the main rotor. So it's used for pedal turns. And then in cruise flight, you know, when we first picked the aircraft up out here to a hover, you have to have a little bit of left pedal in to compensate for the torque. Yeah. So the main rotor blade turns to the left, right. which causes the fuselage to want to yaw to the right, all right? And so you have to bring in a little bit of left pedal to compensate for that. And then once you get some forward airspeed and you go through effective translational lift, not only does the main rotor become more effective, but the tail rotor becomes more effective and the, yaw, the, the nose will actually start to yaw to the left a bit and you can come off that left pedal. And by the time you get to a forward airspeed of about 35, 40 knots, you're pretty much neutral on the pedals. You're just about even on the pedals. It takes almost nothing there. Okay, so, and then during a descent now where you use the pedals, when you come down on the collective and reduce the amount of torque going to the main rotor, then you're reducing the amount of yaw there. And so as you come down on the collective, you have to bring in a little bit of right pedal, whatever it takes to keep your aircraft in yaw. And we've got yaw strings that you can see on the front windshield there. And whenever you come up on the collective, you may have to dial in a little bit of left pedal just to compensate for the torque. Whatever it takes to keep the, yeah. the strings going if straight up and down the windshield. If the string goes left, then you need right, the opposite right. Yeah, just right. imagine that your yeah. foot pulls the string, right? So here's the strings. If we're going through the air and we're in trim, the strings are going to be going straight up the windshield like this, right? If we're yawed with the nose to the left, then the, the aircraft is going to be, the strings are going to be over here to the left like that. Mm -hmm. And if we're yawed to the right, it would be going that way. Right. Yes. If, 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 so if the strings if the, like that and you're yawing to the left, you need to, to press the right, right, right pedal yeah. to make, the right, that's right. Just conceptualize that your foot pulls yeah. the string. So yeah. if you're yeah. over here on the left, you need right pedal. Yeah. There, right. So, okay. So basically, that's essentially how the flight controls work on an air on a helicopter. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, more importantly, let's talk about what you don't do in a helicopter. <laughs> All right. So think of it this way: if you're flying through the air and you're we're at a speed of say 70 or whatever, and we come back on the stick, the rotor disc tilts aft, the amount and the angle of, angle of attack on the rotor disc increases, the amount of lift increases, and we go up. Right. Mm -hmm. If we come forward on the stick then the rotor disc itself tilts forward and the angle of attack decreases and the amount of lift decreases and the aircraft goes down it also speeds up but it goes down right if that was taken to a relatively aggressive push on the stick forward in flight then you can get to a point if you were to rapidly bring the nose forward to where the main rotor disc is producing essentially no lift at all at least for a bit while you're pushing forward on the stick that's not good because the normal or order of affairs is, I'm going to let you hold this for just a second. The normal order of affairs is this rotor is up here producing lift and it's pulling up the entire time producing lift. And we are simply a pendulum hanging from this rotor, right? right. So if the rotor goes to the left, you know, about fuselage tra travels, and the rotor is in command of the fuselage, right? When you get to where you're producing no lift on this rotor, the, the rotor is no longer commanding the fuselage. In other words, they don't have to do the same thing. Um, about the only way you can get that is some semblance of nose low, because you come forward on the stick, right? When you do that, your tail rotor is still above the, is above the CG and producing thrust. And it will typically produce a slight left yaw, but a right rolling moment to, to the fuselage. And, the, and you'll exceed the flapping limits and the blades will come around and chop off the tail boom. And, uh, and then, it, Sometimes, not all the time, but many times, a few more revolutions and it may snap the mast in two, and then you get separation of the mast or the rotor from the aircraft. Well, you you will always chop off the tail boom with mast bumping. You may or may not break the mast in two, okay? In fact, there's one video that exists of an FH 1100, a, a Fuller 1100, that a guy actually mast bumped it and they recorded it in air. It was not it was, you know, he accidentally mass bumped it, but they got it on video. It did not break the mast. It did chop the tail boom off, and the aircraft kind of came all apart, but the mast stayed intact. And so, you know, everybody thinks, well, it's mass bumping. You got to, if it were to have been mass bumping, you had, would have had to snap the mast in two. That's not true. The tail boom will always be chopped off in mass bumping. The mast may or may not break 
depending on a uh, set of events. And so. if the blades chop off the, uh, the, the, the tail boom, uh, uh, are the blades still, uh, still in, in, in one piece or are they also <coughs> Not usually, although that, you know, there's a video of one that yeah. chopped one off and then it, it actually hit it a second time. It was all recorded on video yeah. and the blades basically stopped and the aircraft's just falling, free falling out of the sky. Oh, yeah. Anyway, a mass bump is typically a fatal event, all right? So you're not gonna, <laughs> that's the one thing you do not wanna do is mass bump a two blade semi-rigid rotor system right this first uh, occurred in Hueys and it, and it can occur in a Huey a two-blade Cobra Robinson Bell 206 all any two-blade system you can mass bump and uh, so you don't want to ever aggressively get forward on the stick on a two-blade uh, helicopter uh, sort of the same thing happens with the gyroplane only for different aerodynamic reasons but they both end up resulting in your death all right so, so you never so want to aggressively get is there a difference in a multi-blade? The, yeah, there, and that, that's way beyond the scope of SFAR 73, but I'll just tell you that you can do aerobatics with, with uh, fully articulated rotor systems mm -hmm. and with rotary rotor systems that you cannot do with a semi-rigid yeah. rotor system. Right? So anyway, what you don't want to do is get aggressively forward. Don't ever get light in the seat. You never want to push forward on the stick enough that you're getting light in the seat. You know, So somebody could ask, well, what's the difference? We pick up at a hover and uh, you know, then we come relatively aggressively forward on the stick and you know, but you're never getting light in the seat Your airspeed is is not sufficient enough that forward stick movement really produces an unloading of the rotor All right, that's not true if you're going through the air at 70 or 80 and you get the same amount of push on the stick You will unload the rotor, All right? That's kind of akin to your, being in your car and going over if you're just Driving in your car five miles an hour and you go up over a hill and down the other side, you never get light in the seat. All right, now hit it at 20. All right, so now you're starting to get light in the seat. You know, hit the same hill at 40 and you jump over the hill. You know, and you're obviously getting, you know, unloading the the car. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So the one thing you really never, never, ever, never want to do is get aggressively forward at any degree of of uh, you know forward airspeed more right. than about walking speed. You know, because you, you have the potential of unloading the rotor and leading to mass bumping. It, it occurs much faster, the higher, the higher the speed, the quicker it's going to occur. The more the unloading of the rotor disc, given the same amount of forward movement on the on the stick. So, all right, so that's it. Okay, what else do we need to tell you about with SFAR 73 training? So I just told you that you never want to get forward, aggressively forward can lead to what's called mass bumping and lead to your death. <laughs> and that's in any two-blade rotor system, right? UE 206, again, all of them, not just the Robbies. All right, second thing is, and this is particular to the Robbies, is they have very lightweight rotors on them. They don't weigh a lot, particularly the R-22. The R-22 weighs even less. You know? So if the engine quits, you have to rapidly get the collective essentially all the way down, all right? You only have a couple seconds to get it down in R-22, maybe two to three seconds in an R-22. And you've got, probably got somewhere more in the neighborhood of four to five to six seconds in an R-44, but you have got to get the collective down. If you do not get the collective all the way down and you get a rotor stall, you are going to die. You're not going to get hurt. It's not going to scare you. Believe me, it's essentially 100% fatal, all right? And anything other than, you know, if you were happen to be engine quit and you did something stupid from, you know, 25 or 30 feet, you might actually live through that one. But... If you're in flight and you get a blade stall, it's a done deal. You, you know, that's it's essentially a 100% fatal. So, so as far as 73, don't push aggressively forward on the stick and unload it and mass bump it. All right. If the engine quits, we got to get the collective down quickly. All right. To save your own butt. All right. <laughs> all right. That's it. Yeah. So, okay. Well, let's get this thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next video.